So what we're going to do is go over how to um, take an Xbox controller and interface it with a Raspberry Pi. So what we're trying to do is, is connect a Raspberry Pi so that it will, we can create a uh, program that will allow us to automate uh, pressing buttons on the controller, which then those signals will get sent to an Xbox and be able to actually play an Xbox game um, or to automate playing an Xbox game. So basically, uh, here we have a Raspberry Pi 3, here we have an Xbox controller, and so at the end of this, what we'll end up having is this sort of a Frankenstein looking thing, which is what we have here, which is a deconstructed Xbox controller with a um, piece of um, circuit board, which allows us to um, connect it to the Raspberry Pi's um, GPIO pins, the general purpose, um, input output pins on the Raspberry Pi, which we can then um, control using Python scripts, using the GPIO module library thing. So in order to do this, basically we need a, a, few, a few tools. Um, basically, it's useful to have needle nose pliers, uh, wire cutters, a small Phillips head screwdriver, wire strippers, um, just to do everything. Uh, also a soldering iron to actually making the connections and also a multimeter for doing troubleshooting and debugging, making sure that everything is connected. Uh, in terms of parts, we will need um, a piece of uh, perf board um, for actually mounting all of the components to. Um, we need 20 pin female um, headers. Uh, this is what will actually make the connection with the male headers of the, on the Raspberry Pi. So I have a couple of those. Uh, we'll need some uh, 220 ohm resistors. So these we need so that uh, we can control the current flow between the, the circuit board on the Raspberry, I mean the circuit board on the Xbox controller, um, controlling the current flow between that and the Raspberry Pi. The Raspberry Pi is a relatively sensitive piece of electronics, so if you um, either over voltage it or over current it, it will fry it. So that's to protect the Raspberry Pi. We will also need some, uh, some uh, electrical wire for making the connections. So this is, uh, you can either use uh, stranded or solid core wire, um, something that's like uh, 22 to 28 gauge um, copper wire or steel wire is just fine. Or I think the newer ones are steel. Um, Copper wire is fine. Uh, you need some uh, light duty uh, rosin core soldering, uh, solder, make the connections. And other than that, I think you are good. The only other things that are useful is uh, to have a desoldering um, pump or vacuum pump, I, I guess they're called, um, for basically undoing any, any solder joints that you mess up. <laughs> the other thing that's useful is, is having, um, this is a, a copper, uh, braided copper. Um, uh, it basically does the same exact thing. It removes um, solder from a perf board uh, easily to undo your mistakes. <laughs> So the actual Xbox controller, basically when you have a brand new fresh one, uh, the first thing that we need to do is take apart the um, controller housing. So there's usually about eight screws um, on the back here. And to reach that, you need a, a relatively long but small um, Phillips head screwdriver. Take all of those out, so I've already done that. Movie magic. <laughs> <laughs> and so then we have the internals of the, of the um, Xbox controller. Basically we have, um, 
we have uh, the actual uh, PCB, the printed circuit board, that has all the electronic components and what the USB cord connects to. That's sort of their main thing of interest, but we also have the um, two trigger hardware levers here. Um, the other thing is, is we also have these two vibrating motors. So these are what, what causes the thing to rumble. Um, for doing the uh, these controllers, because we're trying to automate everything, um, we would really not like to have this thing rattling around. So the very first thing that you want to do is cut these things out. Um, so you can just snip off the wires, take those out. We don't need them for anything, um, but I have a whole bucket of them. So you can take those off. Um, then what we'll do is we'll remove the, um, the PCB. There's uh, usually two screws that are both connected to the plastic uh, joining the, um, the triggers. So we'll just remove those. making sure that we save the screws in case we need them later. <clears throat> so now we can pull this off and pull it up. Oh. So some of the buttons will get stuck to it. Um, on the back here, uh, basically all of the X, the X, Y, A, B buttons, the Xbox, the back start button, all of those things will fall out of the actual thing, so just be careful with that. Um, for the, this type of controller that we're using, we don't need any of that stuff, so all of that can get thrown aside. Um, one of the important things here is uh, uh, there's a little assembly inside that controls the directional pad, the D-pad. And so depending on the actual version of the controller, these have different connectors. So in this case, we have a, a set of headers. So we have female headers here, male headers here that go together. So when we took off the, the PCB, they just separated out. Sometimes though, like in this controller here, yeah. We'll just take this one apart as well. You can see the difference. All right, so this one, when you pull it out, you'll notice that the, um, the D-pad um, is connected by a ribbon strip, or a ribbon cable to the uh, original PCB. So when we um, find one of these, basically you can just immediately cut this out. So for simplicity, um, easier just to cut it right in the middle to get rid of it. Um, when we go to actually solder into those, uh, those, um, those terminals, we can do it in a couple of different ways. So we'll probably, um, we can probably just desolder these, these um, pins right here and remove the rest of this um, plastic ribbon cable. But anyway, that's one version. Okay. All right, so on the uh, board here, you'll, um, this is the front of the board, as you're, if you're holding it. Um, we have our analog sticks, and then we also have all of our buttons. So the buttons, typically when you um, take apart the controller, they have these little rubber pads on top of them. So what these things are is when you're pushing on the button, this helps make contact between these sets of terminals. So there's two of them. And basically this is just a switch so that when you push down on it, connects the two sides, completes the circuit. That tells the um, rest of the circuitry in here that you've pressed that button. And then that signal gets transmitted to the Xbox. So we don't want that. So we can remove those. All right, so 
We now have it completely disassembled. I mean, if you're an overachiever, you can remove the triggers to make it all more compact, and you can also remove the analog sticks, um, but those involve quite a bit of desoldering and it's a little bit of a pain, so we'll just leave those as is.